not possible for us to bring all of our dealers into the home office and factory, it is our purpose by means of this motion picture to take the factory out across the country to our organization so that all may see the remarkable progress which has been made in the method of brush manufacture. This primitive twisting machine is the actual device which I used in making the first fuller brushes over 35 years ago. Constant improvement and efficiency of production together with greatly increased volume are the chief reasons why the fuller dealer today can sell this product of best quality at such low prices. Thus, to build for himself a highly profitable business. I take great pleasure in introducing this screen story. It will speak for itself. With these few remarks, I now say, as does the director in the studio, lights, action, camera. At Somerville, Massachusetts in 1906, this business was born in humble surroundings. Mr. Fuller was a young man then, and in the cellar of an older sister's home, he designed the brushes and made them with his own hands, special brushes for the specific needs of his customers. He was the whole business, manufacturing at night, selling and delivering by day, thus contributing to a higher standard of living and making his dream come true. Such industrial pioneers with courage and initiative have contributed much to the growth of the nation's industry. He was the first Fuller brush man, and he brought to the home the solution of many a personal and household cleaning problem. His brushes were intelligently designed and well made of materials of highest quality. Housewives told housewives, and his business grew. There developed down through the years at Hartford, Connecticut, the largest brush business of its kind in the world. As a monument to its success stands this great modern plant, housing many highly trained people who, with the aid of the most up-to-date machines, make many types of fuller brushes for health and beauty, for home and industry. Because of the sustained increase of sales in recent years, it has been necessary from time to time to build several large additions. In this way, expanding departments have been adequately accommodated and production has been greatly stepped up. We are justly proud of our plant and our workers. Let us see what goes on within these mighty walls. Greeting all in the main office rotunda is the great marble wild boar carved in Italy, a symbol of the high-grade bristles that go into fuller brushes. Back of him are the general offices. To run this large business requires not only an alert executive staff, but also hundreds of busy clerical employees. They are organized into many departments, through which we serve and keep in close touch with our distributing stations and branch offices, our dealers and the outside world. At the receiving platform, there are constantly arriving carloads of brush and mop materials to be processed and assembled in the various operations of manufacture. Much of this material is hair and bristle. Although many of these shipments have been sterilized at the source of supply and under government regulation, before they can be taken into the warehouses, the contents of every case is passed through our own thorough sterilizing process. The bundles are loaded in the carriage, which is moved into the steam jacketed chamber and sealed up. The valves are opened, first to create a vacuum, which is maintained for a long time. Then under pressure, live steam at a temperature of about 250 degrees is forced in and so held that it can penetrate every space around and within the bundles. The drying is gradually done under vacuum. The complete operation takes over three hours. It is now certain that the material finally rolled out is sanitary and absolutely clean.
Huge stocks of raw materials assure constant supply and uniform quality, regardless of worldwide fluctuating conditions. They are gathered from the far corners of the earth, wherever the best bristle, hair, fiber, and cotton can be found. For we all know that no product can be better than the materials which go into it. The contents of these warehouses are valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars. In this department are performed some of the primary operations in the preparation of materials used in brush manufacture. From the warehouse, bristle, hair, and fiber are brought as needed. They are cut to various required lengths and made up into bundles. On large, complicated machines, 25 feet long, there are prepared mixtures of different kinds of fibers and hair, selected for color and texture according to the type of brush for which they are to supply the filling. A hair may be too soft or one kind of fiber too stiff, but the proper mixture of the two just right for a special purpose brush. On the layout table, the stock is prepared for the machine. A quantity of each of the materials to be mixed is measured out in uniform piles. Then the experienced operator who controls the entire process lays the material so prepared onto a moving belt which carries it into the machine. So it starts to move around and under in a continuous journey. Vertical guide belts contact the ends and keep them even. Rapidly moving tines comb out the edges of the material, straightening out the irregular pieces. A traveling member passing over the belt faster than the belt itself moves, picks up the material and folds it back and forth on itself. To assure a thoroughly blended mixture, the operator runs the batch through nine or ten times before it is taken off. To maintain uniform quantity of material in each brush, it is necessary to weigh it and to make it up into bundles. These bundles travel through the table chute to a box, which when filled is taken to the stockroom from where the different production departments get the materials for their operating needs. There is on hand at all times a large stock of wire and metal strips, rust-proof, easily bent, tough, made of special alloy steel with high tensile strength. Nine different gauges of wire are used in the making of different types of brushes. A coil is placed on the turntable wheel and then threaded into the wire straightening and cutting machine. It is forced through the dies. Every inch is made rifle bore straight. The clipping edges bite it off into pieces of any predetermined length. This wire is being prepared to supply the brush twisting machines. Here we see many twisters, that's what the men call themselves, turning out thousands of brushes every hour. This is the first and most important operation. The twisting machines are the same in principle as the original hand-operated device that Mr. Fuller first used. But there are now, of course, many refinements and improvements on the present power-driven machines. However, the skill of the operator is still essential to the making of a fine brush and dexterous hand control and operator judgment are most important. When a brush maker works, he creates pieces that consist of not only the best obtainable materials, but which also have turned into them the virtues of craft and skill. The making of a twisted-in wire brush from hair and wire seems almost a trick of magic as the material is fastened in and the brush twirls into shape. This is a flesh brush in the early stages of its production. A seasoned operator makes hundreds of brushes every day, and to him, each one is a custom-made masterpiece. On this same machine, there is an interesting final operation, the twisting of the wire ends of the brush. This, too, requires skillful control. The making of the household brush is done in the same way. To watch the work, one would think that it's easy, but it isn't. This work is developed to an art, 
and with many of the men it is a lifetime job. The material having been secured in the spirally twisted wires, the surface of the brush is trimmed smooth and even on an ingenious speed machine, the business end of which is similar to a lawnmower, and the brushes are given a real haircut of uniform length. All of these brushes are trimmed in this way. In the bending operation, the pieces are deftly shaped. Like so much of king work, it relies on human skill. The wire ends are clipped even. Electric spot welding of these two ends is just another detail that makes fuller brushes so durable and strong. This weld holds the wires together and helps to prevent them from working loose from the cement in the handle. The household brushes are bent to required shape in the same way as are the personal brushes. The connection is fastened on in a powerful press. The brushes are now ready to be put in the handles. The plastic composition handles of the familiar ivory or shell color are made in an especially equipped plant. Sheets of Fullerex, a peroxylin material, are cut into plates of the required size, but they are too hard and brittle to be shaped. At the stamping presses, they're heated to a temperature of 250 degrees. This makes them soft and pliable, so that they can be readily cut and formed by the dies, which stamp out from each plate a number of handle halves. After they are cut and shaped, they cool off and return to their original hardness. A solvent cement is carefully put on the edges of the two halves. They are then placed and held tightly in a metal form. This work is done on a unique turntable. As it turns and carries away each form when closed, it brings back a form that has traveled completely around. During this interval, the cement is set. The edges are now beveled and made smooth on a rapidly turning cutting wheel for there can be no rough sides. The capping is done to provide a ferrule for the insertion of the brush. Here, solvent cement is also used. Each piece is carefully inspected, for these will become the handles and they must be as perfect in every detail as the brush part itself. Now, brush and handle are put together with a heated cement mixture, poured into the handle in just the right quantity. The end of the brush is inserted and the cement hardens, holding the brush and the handle firmly together. Then the final touches are given to the finished brush. Every part is looked over by alert and critical eyes. Any piece that is not up to the exacting fuller specifications gets no farther than these tables. Here is protected the fuller reputation for high quality and best workmanship. Mass production, yes, but every part checked and rechecked all along the line to assure long life and satisfactory service. Maximum value at the lowest possible price. All personal brushes are packaged in attractive containers to keep them fresh and clean, ultimately to be sold by fuller dealers and to be used for the personal comfort and cleanliness of milady. Right now in millions of homes, some type of personal brush is being used with good results and pleasure. The household brushes, too, are carefully inspected with the same meticulous care and attention. They're almost hand-tailored. Then the famous Fuller red tip tag is attached. It is a guarantee of Fuller quality and workmanship. Besides the twisted-in wire brushes, there are steel grip brushes, too, made in an entirely new and different way. This principle of manufacture was developed by Fuller as an improvement over certain types of old wooden backs that often cracked and let the bristles fall out. In an intricate machine of unique operation, a strip of metal is formed into a channel. The filling material is looped under a wire and fed into this channel. Together, these are passed through a set of rollers which roll the edges of the channel over the wire and against the filling, 
thus locking it in securely. As the strip reaches the end of the machine, it is automatically cut into lengths. These brush strips must be bent to shape. They lend themselves to many forms and adaptations. The sweeping surface of this type of brush is trimmed after it's formed. The piece is held with the ends of the hair or fiber at just the rightly gauged distance from the trimming drum. Now the ends of the bent strip are locked by a specially designed double clamp to which the connector handle will be attached. Just another step in the progress of brush making. Before we learn how this department functions today, let us look back and see how a cotton mop was once made by a complicated and involved method on many different machines. Obviously, the quantity that could be finished in a working day was relatively small. The processes of manufacture were primitive and costly and made the price of a good mop much higher than it should be. Mr. Fuller watched all this work necessary to produce a mop he resolved to develop a better way, more efficient, more economical, for it has always been a company policy that whenever a saving is effected through refinements of production, that saving is reflected in the selling price. This old horse and buggy method of mop making became history, and a better way was perfected. As the result of constant study and improvement, the company's machine development department designed and made a remarkable wet mop machine that automatically performs all of the operations that once were done on a number of small machines in the slow and difficult way that you have just seen. With the new machine, the strands of best quality cotton yarn are fed in and move along through the different processes step by step. This intricate mechanical giant can turn out about 700 complete wet mops every hour. From its end marches a constant parade. In this recently enlarged department, there are also made the dry mops and dusters. Only the finest cotton yarn is used. Here too, in strands, it is fed in from the back. Efficiency and economy are attained with this cleverly designed machine that brings high standards of quality and low price together, and only production efficiency can do that. The basic principle of the twisted-in wire brush is adapted here, but these machines are semi-automatic. The cotton strands are cut to length. Then, with the cotton between the two pieces of wire, presto, the machine twists, and a mop is made. Across the aisle at a battery of punch presses, operators form the mops and securely attach a metal bracket designed to hold the ends of the mop together and also to accommodate the mop handle connector which will be put in place later. When this work is done, the pressmen toss the mops over onto a belt conveyor which carries them along to where an inspection is made. Still on the conveyor, the mops keep traveling and pass under a chemical treatment spray. So ends another chapter of fuller production efficiency. The launderable dry mop is a popular number. It is made by hand on a group of large sewing machines with special attachments. The opening for the metal frame is bound with sturdy tape as deft hands turn the piece under the busy needles. Lots of tightly spun cotton yarn is sewed on with double stitching. The edges are strongly bound. As the mop moves along from machine to machine, it is fascinatingly created right before our eyes. All these young women are expert sewing machine operators. They have to be. 
When the mops are finished, the wire frame to which the handle is fastened is put in place. There is no more interesting cycle of manufacture than the making of the popular fiber broom, which has been constantly improved through many new refinements in the process of its production. The filler that makes up the center of the broom is a special pliable fiber. The outside is a stiffer and coarser fiber. The combination gives an ideal sweeping edge. At the forming tables, just the right amount of each fiber is gathered and placed in metal clamps. These filled clamps are passed on and the fiber's end is soaked in a special hot fluid asphalt that is a strong sealing element. Then the metal casing is clamped on. This casing is formed of two stampings. They are fastened together with rivets that pass right through the fiber itself. This makes the casing and fiber into one strong piece. Now the end of the broom is trimmed to an even edge with a quick cutting operation. It is then given a good shaking and scraping against a rapidly revolving drum to eliminate any loose or broken fibers. The head is now ready for the broom handle. These handles are of the finest straight grained hardwood. Strength of construction is essential here, too. And on another riveting machine, the broom casing and handle are fastened together securely so that they will never come apart. When this work is finished, the two pieces are really one. No detail overlooked. Even a string hole is bored into the top end of the handle and the string inserted so that the broom can be hung up, thus protecting the sweeping edge. The metal casing is covered with a fine grade lacquer by one of the modern airbrush spray guns. The lacquer quickly dries and the racks of finished brooms are rolled onto where each one is individually looked over. Brooms like these are in more than 10 million homes, giving long and satisfactory service. So is born the famous Fuller broom that takes the hard work out of sweeping. At the end of the inspection department, the broom heads are carefully wrapped, for they must reach the user in perfect condition. The smallest brush in size in the Fuller family and the largest in quantity sold is the toothbrush. It is made on an intricate machine by a process which locks in the bristle tufts securely with a crossed wire staple. This operation is rather well concealed, but by watching you can get the general idea as to how it works. The natural unbleached bristles give double wear and they are good for the teeth and gums. There are different sizes and shapes to answer every personal preference. This brush is popular because it is well and scientifically made. The brushes are sealed in cellophane containers so that they will reach the user clean and well protected. One of the latest developments in hair brushes is the bristle comb. Rows of stiff bristle of finest quality are set at an angle in a curved back to make a perfect arc. The bristles are fastened in by a method similar to that which makes the toothbrush. Each individual tuft is put in place and locked in with wire staples.
When the bristles are in place, they are trimmed to give a curved brushing surface, permitting a circular motion of the brush when in use. There are different styles and sizes for men, women, and children. These brushes are easily kept clean, and the handles are of a special composition. Molded combs are made from a plastic material which is melted in the machine to the consistency of flowing tar. Under great pressure, it is forced into the molds and held until it hardens, then automatically ejected. Two combs are molded in the die at the same time, sort of Siamese twins right now. Then they are clipped apart. Then the rough spot at the point of breakoff is ground smooth. Each comb is then sealed into a transparent envelope, not to be opened until it reaches the one who will use it. To obtain the best results with fuller mops and applicators, we supply a high quality line of floor and furniture waxes and polishes, and metal and silver polishes too. This wax, a special formula in the convenient can, is a product widely demanded. It penetrates deeply, lasts long, requires less effort to apply, and polishes easily. We installed our own designing and mechanical department to develop many of the machines which we require for our special and constantly changing needs. We also maintain a completely equipped machine shop. Many of the master mechanics and tool makers have been with Fuller for the greater part of their lives. As we watch these men work, we understand better the mechanic's expression, true to within one ten thousandths of an inch. A fine example of the accomplishment of this department is a new broom-making machine that resembles an assembly line. It performs most of the steps of manufacture automatically and with mechanical precision. The raw material is fed into one end and the broom head begins to take shape as it moves along from one operation to the next. In a remarkably short time, out of the other end of the machine comes a finished product. The mighty multiple operation press, weighing 20 tons, is the king of the department. Into it a steel strip is fed, and with a crankshaft pressure of 150 tons, its intricate dies stamp and shape parts little or big. It's a Hercules for work, and can thump out thousands of pieces an hour. In this part of the factory, where stamping machines and punch presses are running, it is easy to appreciate the very real problem of our special requirements. For every metal part we make, is of unique design, answering a definite purpose in brush, broom, or mop construction. Here are stamped out the blanks from metal sheets. Day in and day out, different presses stamp, punch, and shape a wide variety of metal pieces that will be assembled, finally to become a part of one of the many Fuller products. The printing department is a complete unit. In it, there are great presses that print in colors. This is another good example of our ability to do things in a big way, right under our own roof. Here every month are printed and folded millions of booklets, leaflets, catalogs, and other printed pieces that help and inspire dealers, customers, and prospects so that they will better appreciate and understand the entire Fuller line. To supply the ever-increasing demand of our dealers, large inventories of finished goods are maintained at all times. 
packing for shipment is going on constantly and orders are promptly filled. Into strong containers, busy stock clerks count the pieces and from these many tiers, the shipping department draws the required supply. Thus, the constant flow of merchandise from the factory is kept underway. To make prompt deliveries and give good service to a far-flung army of dealers, motor trucks load up and pull away. This is always a bit of the goods is shipped by fast freight. Car loads are made up at the loading platform at our siding. The yard engine calls and takes them along to begin their journey to our distributing stations in more remote territories. They're on their way. Across the states and overland they travel, and on to the seaboard too. Their destination, millions of homes throughout the land and overseas. Twelve distributing centers, strategically located from coast to coast, supply over 5,000 dealers who sell millions of brands a year. The company maintains 175 branch offices. Sales are made in every state in the Union and in the provinces of Canada and in many foreign lands as well. We might say that the sun never sets on the Fuller Brush dealer. He is America's most famous visitor, the real friend of the housewife, because the things he sells serve her household and personal needs better and more economically than any similar products that she can buy. Fuller brushes of many kinds. Now, instead of one man selling, it is thousands, millions of calls a year, millions of dollars in sales, high quality at a low price, good profits for those who sell, big value for those who buy. Back of the Fuller Brush dealer at all times stands the vast production facilities of a modern organization. Our business is growing. We are marching ahead. Are you in the parade? We are fine and dandy. How are you?